الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters Click the subscribe button Inshallah Do it now Okay good So this video today is on the issue of problems in life you know, you get one problem after another, or another problem after another. You tried so hard for things to go right, or you worked so hard to get a particular thing, but it didn't go your way. And in the end, troubles, problems, calamity and failure. What do you do in such a situation? Brothers and sisters, the advice that I want to share with you is directly taken from an ayah in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 216. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, that it may be that you hate something. Something happens in life and you hate that it, for that to happen. For example, you really wanted to marry a certain sister. Or sister, you really wanted to marry a particular brother. Or you really wanted to study or get a certain grade or whatever it may be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the fact that you didn't get that, you didn't get to marry her, you didn't get the grades that you want, you didn't get into the university that you want, you hate that. You hate it. But Allah said, it might actually be that that was good for you. Yeah. That brother might have beat you, sister. It may be that that marriage would have ended up in a divorce. It may be that you would have gone to that university and you would have lost your religion. You hate for that to happen. But Allah says, there was good in it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right after that, there may be something that you love. You want it to happen so bad. Oh, I wish I could marry her. But Allah says, actually, that thing that you love, Allah said, that's bad for you. It's bad for you. Now, <coughs> of course, we don't know, right? You, re you want to marry a sister, you think she's the one for me, she's perfect for me, da da da. You want to go to this uni, you think it's the right uni for you. You're obviously going to try. You're going to try and do it, right? You're going to try your best to get that thing that you want. What do you do in such a situation? How are you going to know if it's bad? Well, you don't know if it's bad. That's what Allah says. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows really what's good for you. Allah knows really what's bad for you. Whether you like it or not. The medicine is sour, but it's good for you. Allah knows. You don't know. So when you find in life that it didn't go according to how you wanted it to go, that's Allah trying to show you that wasn't good for you. That wasn't good for you. So you try your best to marry her in the most correct halal way. You try your best to go to that uni. You try your best to get that job. You try your best to do whatever it is you want to do. But when you find it not going your way, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now intervening and showing you, my slave, you can't see what's on the other side. The grass isn't greener on the other side. Wallahu ya'lamu. Allah says, I know. Wa antum la ta'lamu. You don't know. So the way that I will help you out of this mess, so you don't go and make that mistake for yourself, so you don't have to enter into a greater catastrophe, calamity, is that I'll prevent this thing that you love from coming your way. Or maybe something that you hate, I'll bring that your way. Because in it is good for you. In it is good for you. So what we learn from this, brothers and sisters, is that this calamity that you and I might be facing, that you're so sad and depressed about right now, and you're so angry about some of you, and some of you are so hurt by something that's happened, actually, it's a blessing. Deep down, that calamity that you're experiencing, it's a blessing. There is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does except that the end of it is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He does, whatever He does, even if it appears to be bad, the outcome is always good. That's why Abdullah ibn Mubarak and Sufyan, rahimahumullah, they used to say, a person cannot be a faqih, a person of knowledge, a person of understanding. If he is, if he is upset, and he's unpleased when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a calamity his way. Rather, a person is a faqih, is a person of understanding and knowledge of the religion. When a calamity comes, he smiles. He smiles. Because Allah is saving that person from something worse. 
Brothers and sisters, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ Look at the ayah. Allah said, verily, verily after hardship, there is ease. Verily after hardship, there is ease. Now, my question to you is, Allah said that once, right? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need to repeat himself? No. If Allah said something once, it's from Allah. Above the seven heavens. That's, that's where Allah is saying this from. It's Allah. It's enough for you to say something once, Ya Rabbi. But then Allah repeats himself because me and you as human beings were weak, our confidence is low, and Allah is just trying to, Allah is just reassuring us just that little bit more by repeating. Verily, after hardship, there is ease. In case you didn't catch it the first time, verily, after hardship, there is ease. Rather, the ulama, the way they explain this ayah is that with the hardship, the ease is there. That Allah brought you the hardship, the difficulty came, the heartbreak came, your parents told you you can't marry this particular sister, that university letter came saying you can't get into this particular uni. With that actual hardship that came, with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you an ease. With it, Allah sent you a way out. Not one, but because Allah repeated the ayah, two. Let me give an example. It's like saying Allah, when He closed one door on you, when the world closed one door on you, Allah opened up two doors for you. With every one door that they close on you, Allah opened up two. But you're there telling me, brother, if that was the case, then why can't I see that door? The reason that you can't see that door is because you're too busy looking at the door that just got closed. If you and I were to just lift our heads a little bit, you would see the wonderful, beautiful doors of opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up around us. But we refuse to see them because you're too fixated at looking at that one door that just closed. One door that just closed. Even the kuffar have this understanding. What do they say? When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Lemons are sour. Make lemonade, bro. Add some sugar and water and do whatever you need to do. And you got a nice, sweet drink. How is it the kuffar? They look, they say, you know, when life throws something at you, you know, make a salty situation sweet by adding a bit of sugar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the confidence to tell us that this salt that he's throwing our way, it's actually good for us. It's preventing us from a great harm. And what I want to do, inshallah, is just to give you a story um, uh, that is narrated by the scholars to kind of put this whole issue into perspective. There was a king and he had a very close bitana. He had a very close advisor, a counsellor. And this counsellor of the king, a very strange individual indeed, he would always... Whenever something terrible happened, or whenever something good happened, he would always say, La Allah fihi khair. He would always say, Perhaps in this thing that happened, there's good in it. So you became ill. He would say, La Allah fihi khair. We just lost some money. Taxes didn't come the way they were supposed to come. Another government, another country rather, sorry, invaded the king's land somewhere. So if something like that was to happen, this advisor would say to the king, Ya king, La Allah fihi khair. Perhaps in it is some good for you. One particular day, the king actually got wounded on his face. He got slashed in his face. Imagine you get slashed in your face. You're the king. You're bleeding. Imagine how you're feeling. Like, this is terrible. What good is there in this? Like, you're the king of the people. You're taking care of your people. And someone cuts your face up. And then your advisor comes to you and says, Yo, king, la'alla fihi khair. Perhaps there is good in this. The king becomes very angry. You're telling me that there is some kind of good in me 
being permanently damaged in my face for the rest of my life? What good could there possibly be in this? He tells his guards, grab this man, take him and throw him in prison. Now, as this guy, as this counselor is being dragged by the guards into the prison, what do you think he's saying? Is this good that he's going to spend his life in prison now? It's not good, right? But what does he say? The king's like, this guy is just, this guy is mad. <laughs> okay, yeah, khair, in the prison. Let's see what kind of khair we have in the prison. Time goes on. Months go on. Years go on. The king goes out on a walk. He starts to wander out of his lands a bit too far on his own. And highway robbers, they catch him. Highway robbers would position themselves in those days to capture free, vulnerable men and women, and then they would sell them as slaves. So they would look for the strong, you know, healthy slave because that's a person they could sell for a lot of money. When they robbed him and they captured him and they were looking at him, assessing him, trying to work out how much money they would make for selling him on. They looked at him and they noticed his face was mashed up because of that scar when he got slashed in the face. They said, nah. They said, nah, we can't sell this guy. This guy, man, people are going to look at him and they're never going to buy him. Rather, it's going to be a burden for us to take him, rob him, all that way. Leave him, man. He's not worth even a penny to us. The highway robbers, they let him go. The highway robbers let the king go. When the king returned back to his palace, he told everyone, he said, bring me that man that I arrested. Bring me my advisor that I arrested all those years back when he told me, la'alla fihi khair. They brought him back and he says to him, I'm sorry, you were right. Today I was robbed by highway robbers. That very same slash on my face, the thing to which you said, perhaps there is good in this, perhaps there is khair in this. That khair became manifest today. That good that was in this wound came out today. Had I not been slashed in the face that day, the highway robbers, they wouldn't have let me go. If my face was clean and I didn't get slashed, me, the king of these people, would have been sold as a slave today. And you were right and I was wrong and I'm sorry. The man, the counsellor who was enslaved, looked at him and smiled. And he says, remember when you were arresting me? What did I say? I also said, La'alla fihi khair. I also said, perhaps inside you arresting me is good. He says, you know what that good was? He said, had I been with you today, had I been with you today and not been in the prison, they would have looked at you and let you go because of your scar, but they would have taken me because my face, it has no scar. But the fact that I was in prison, it saved me from being with you because I was with you everywhere that you went. Everywhere that you went. So there was good in you imprisoning me. And then, you know, they lived happily ever after. The point that I want to make to you, brothers and sisters, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves you. He's your Lord. He's the most merciful. He loves you. He really does. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not find joy in your suffering. Allah wants good for you, but sometimes we don't always know what's best for us. Remember, Allah knows everything. We don't even know the reality of what's in front of us many times. But Allah knows everything that was, can be, will be, should be. And because Allah always has our best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always wants best for us, know that whenever anything bad happens, it can't be bad. In it is always good. It may be that you like something, you like something, but it's bad for you. It may be that you hate something and it's good for you. At the end of the day, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pave the way for us to good. Just be patient and grateful. Be grateful even in the bad times. And of course, be grateful in the good times. In the meantime, brothers and sisters, I request for you, inshallah, to like the video, share the video, subscribe. Please do register for MuslimSurvivalGuide.com. You guys know this is an online program where you can study your religion. You can study Islam. All of these things that I'm telling you, you don't have to wait for videos from me. Learn it yourself, inshallah. And be a Muslim that survives in the 21st century. You can study from the comfort of your own home. We put this program online, taught by myself. So please go to MuslimSurvivalGuide.com and register straight away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.